Hi, this screencast is going to walk through using web form variants. Hi, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I am a Drupal development software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. So what is a web form variant? Web form variant is an alternate instance of a web form that adjusts settings, elements, or behaviors to yield a better result. And some examples of a web form variant, and these are about kind of getting better results, changing the confirmation message, having an alternate confirmation message for certain users, changing elements and properties, changing you know how a form will look and feel, maybe changing the labels, changing what fields are visible. Um, you can also just change the email message that goes out based on a variant. You can even change the recipients. Um, you can enable, disable elements and handlers. And, you know, so what can you really do with these examples I'm giving you with variants? Well, you can use web form variants to create A-B testing, segmentation, and personalization. I'm going to define these. And, you know, A-B testing is a randomized experiment with two variants, an A and a B. It's a way to compare two versions of a single variable, typically by testing a subject's response to variant A against variant B and determining which of the two is more effective. effective, effective. Sorry about the stutter. Um, think about it this way. With a form, you might want to test a long form versus short form, variant A, variant B, and you randomly load them and see which users com who complete the form, what is, which form ver variant has a higher completion rate. Um, it's a very simple way to kind of gradually improve your forms with actual concrete statistics. And segmentation is, you know, audience segmentation is a process of dividing people into subgroups based upon defined criteria such as product usage, demographics, communication behaviors, media use. You know, it's meant to tailor products to a specific targeted audience. In forms, I feel like it's mostly demographics. For example, I work in hospitals, and for an appointment form, you might want to segment a patient versus a caregiver versus a referring physician and have the form change based on who the target audience is. You might ask slightly different questions. You might phrase the questions differently. You might remove certain questions when you start doing the segmentation. And personalization is, is tailoring a service or product to accommodate a specific individual. So take the example of segmentation Further, you've targeted a patient, and now you're personalizing the form to a specific patient. You're saying, you know, Mr. or Miss Blah, how can we help you? You might even be looking up their information to change the form, to pre-populate it, to hide certain questions. You know, that where you're really creating an individualized user experience. Now, how do you configure web form variants? Well, web form variants consist of an element that defines the variant type, so you're kind of specifying I'm doing a variant on this form, and then a settings page to manage the variant instances, those A's and B's. So you're basically saying I want to set up A-B testing and here are the A's and B's on these instant pages. It helps to give you kind of a quick 101 demo, you know, starting out. I'm going to use the contact form. I'm going to show it to you. I'd use it in most of my demos so people should be familiar with it. Just asking four questions and for this variant test that I want to do. I just want to ask, make it a little more verbose, change the titles a little bit. So I go over to build and I hit add element and I go to the variant element which is marked as experimental. And I'm going to just call this variant. For the settings you can you have to select the type of variant. We're going to override the form. This is the default behavior where you'll see it. You get to override any setting of the form as YAML. You can create, since these are plugins, you can create your own custom variant forms and behaviors. But for now, we're just going to override. You could display the variant information on the form. Usually, you want it hidden, but for now, I'm going to say display both on the form and viewed submission. Allowing variants to be pre populated using query string parameters is very helpful. That makes it possible to track which variant's being used because it passes a parameter in the query string. You know, variant equals A or B and randomly loading a variant kicks off A-B testing basically. When someone comes to the form, it will randomly choose variant A or B and let the user fill it out and then using your analytics software like Google Analytics, you can track which variant has a higher success rate. I'm going to get into it a little bit more. We're not going to add any more settings, but we have our variant type override. We're going to display it. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to add the variant at the top. It doesn't have to be there, but it just helps. 
and you'll see this variant tabs, this variants tab has appeared. I'm going to go over to here and very similar handlers, but I'm adding variants. So I'm going to say add variant. We only have override available. I'm going to call this A. I'm going to stick to the A-B test and here's the YAML for all the settings. You can change any settings via YAML. Most people are going to do this. They're going to change elements. So I'm going to copy all the elements as YAML over to this editor. And since we're only testing labeling, I'm just going to isolate the titles. And we're going to just try to make it a little nicer. Please enter your name. Please enter your email. Please enter your subject. This is a very simple example, but I'm just changing the titles. And I'm going to collapse this. If you go over here, you could change how the handlers work. So you could change how the email message is displayed. You could change who the email message goes to, any little setting you want to tweak. Literally anything. I kind of want to emphasize that. I'm going to hit save. And so we have a variant A. We can go in and we can view it. Here we go. Variant A, and we now have you know, the labels change. And if I was to submit this, if I go over to the test tab and hit send, I go back and I go to results, you'll see that the variant's tracked. You got a nice little column, variant A, you've got a submission from it. And when you go to view it, that variant will be applied to the form. So if we go to edit it, the variant will totally be kicked in. Um, that's a pretty much, you know, variant 101 demo for the webform module. Let's keep going. And you know, what's the best way to start using webform variants? Well, I like the crawl walk run methodology where you kind of start out simple and get more complex as you move on. And I feel A B testing is the simplest way to start crawling, walking a segmentation, and running is getting into full personalization. And you know, crawling begins with just collecting data, like getting the process working and testing a hypothesis, seeing if it works. Um, with any type of personalization, you want to have stats to know if it's successful. And you also, you want to start the process of collecting that data. So to do a demo of A-B testing, there's an example module called the Web Form Example Variant Module. It's, it's installed already, but if you go down, it installs two forms. They're just examples. Here's a variant A-B test. If I click to it, you'll notice the URL is going to change to go to mode A, which is basically a more verbose version of a feedback form. And if I switch from B to A, you'll get a compact version of the form. And the idea, because it's randomized, so if any time someone goes to the URL, it's going to switch them between the two variants, A and B. You'd, you'd have the form up and get, usually it's a, at least 100 submissions, 100 to 200, and you compare and see which variant has the higher submission rate. The fact that it has a higher submission rate, you could assume it's more successful. People are more comfortable filling it out. And really the question is, do people want to be able to preview? Does it help them or does it discourage people? And once you have those stats, you can go over to the variants. And I also, I just want to show you the variants. So if I click Edit, A, all I'm doing is this is, you know, we, you know I'm changing how the title is displayed and I'm actually changing a radius element to a select menu element here. And I'm going to go over to here to, we're going to close this. And B has no settings. B is the default form. Usually when you, well, oh no, I'm turning off the email notifications. I just felt like I wanted to, you know, keep, oh, I'm using the default body, keeping it as simple as possible. These are little tests. I'm turning on the preview. Um, so usually for A-B testing, you actually want to keep it simpler. You want to pick one thing you're testing. For demoing, I kind of just want to show you some of the options. So now let's say we've done these A-B tests and we know that variant A is successful. I'm going to show it to you one more time. We're going to view it. Passes in mode A. Now you can go over to here and say, okay, A was successful. I would like to apply the variant. And you can decide delete the variant that you're applying or delete all variants or don't delete any. You just want to apply it and have that as the default. 
personally, I, you know, for A-B testing, you kind of want to delete all variants because you're done. You, you know the test was successful. I hit apply and it redirects to the form and applies the variant that we've just selected. And if you go over to the variants tab, it's going to be gone. This is the whole, entire workflow to do an A-B test for a web form. So walking starts when specific audience segments are targeted. And there's a demo for that. When I say targeted, you're, you're, you're trying to get an audio, like, let's go to the demo. It's, it's a little tricky. I tried to give a, a more complex demo than just saying, you know, person, audience A, you know, segment A and segment B. Um, if I go over to the build tab, I've got a very simple form where we're just asking for a description. Let's just view it. Just notes. And this starts out as a plain text field. And I'll show you what's happening in variants. There's actually two type of variants kicking in. There's a form type, which is a short form or a long form, and then you can target different organizations, A, B, and C. So if I go over to long form, and I showed you it was a simple text field, but if I view this, now we get a text area, and it says the form type's a long form. I'm just showing you the data that's going in the background. If I go to A, and I say view, it's just going to say hello organization A. It's just dynamically displaying a little extra text. Now where it gets interesting is you click down here, it's a new button because you got two variants kicking in at the same time, you want to be able to apply both of them at the same time. So if you click view variant, I can say I would like a long form for organization A and it will generate that. And you see it in the query string parameters and you see that it says long form organization A, hello organization A, and it's a text error. I know this is a lot to digest. Now. You can have forms like this that you, you know, distribute, you know, it's one URL where you're passing query string parameters, but web forms can be placed on your site as nodes. And that's where you go over to the references tab. And here you're able to create references to different variants as web form nodes. The UI which should not be surprising when I click add reference, I'm going to see you know, an example. The content type that we're going to use, because I have two content types that have web forms, you know, a web form field, but let's stick to the web form one. I would like a long form for organization B. I'm going to hit create content. It jumps over. It fills out the form. And then you'll see because the variants are elements, it's just default submission data. So in the background on this web form node, it's going to be a long form for organization B. And if I hit save, we've got a long form from organization B. We get results specifically to this type of form, this variant of the form. It's very powerful because if you have one general form type that you need managed, you know, slight variations of, this gets it very structured and organized so you can have a form reused and changing throughout your site in little subtle ways. Okay, let's hit back. I'm going to hit refresh because I created the form, and even in this UI, it will track the form type and the organization so you can see what's going on. You know, a little caveat, it is somewhat similar to conditional logic, except that you know one specific key condition before the form even loads, the variant, and that makes it more than just hiding and showing a form. It is changing any aspect of the form and very concretely and definitively changing it. I'm going to keep going. So running occurs when a form is personalized to an individual user. This is something I can't really demo to you. I can just show a little snippet of code and make the point that all the variant, every variant we're looking at, that override variant, how it's working, it's a plugin. And you, your developers can create your own plugins that go and they can literally go out in the apply variant method, grab data from your database about a user, and then start changing the form and manipulating it. Um, you could decide when the variants applied, looking at the form and the current user. So personalization is something we're going to have to work together and figure out how we want to implement it. And you know, I think we're going to have to hook into personalization engines to figure out how we can personalize web forms. Um, I just wanted to kind of set things in motion. I think it's a really important direction to explore. And yeah, it's experiment, experiment, experiment. I definitely recommend the A-B testing. I think 
there's immediate ROI for that. The fact that you can take a form and get a higher completion rate by testing different variants of it and seeing making it easier for your users to complete is a huge benefit for your, you know, business owners and for just teams to keep moving forward and have, you know, get used to collecting stats. Once you have stats, you can really do a lot because person, you know, segmentation and personalization requires that as well. So, who sponsored adding variants to the web form module? Well, you know, my main client, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, sponsored the feature. You know, like many healthcare systems, you know, they need web forms that target multiple and segmented audiences. And you can understand for healthcare systems, you have patients, caregivers, physicians. They want to, you know, explore taking one form and having these variants cater to these different audience segments. And, you know, how can you sponsor a feature? Well, if you want to sponsor a feature, please please read my blog post and create a ticket in the web form modules issue queue. And that's it. Thank you.